Hello and welcome to this edition of Tech Talk. My name is Nick Ellis. I'm the PC Computer Guy here in Indianapolis. www.pccomputerguy.com for this and many other tech tips as well as uh, if you need any help in the local Indianapolis area or we can do remote access outside of the Indianapolis area, you can give us a call. Our number is 317-883-7224. That's 883-PCCG. So on this edition of Tech Talk, what we're going to be talking about is... Um, Online file storage. There's three big names in the online file storage. You got Microsoft's OneDrive, you have Google Drive, and you have um, Dropbox. Those are the three biggest names. There are plenty of others, but these are the three big ones. This cloud-based storage is different from something like Carbonite or Mosey, which are intended for backup, but not really for working with your files in real time. So this is more of like an additional folder on your computer that you can put stuff in and you can work with and you can collaborate and all of that stuff. Whereas Carbonite and Mosey are cloud-based backup. This is cloud-based online storage. The reasons why you want, might want to use something like this is if you have a file on multiple and you want to be able to access that file on multiple computers. So say, for example, you're on this computer, a desktop, and I want to have a laptop that has the same file. So if I have a Word document that I'm working on for a school project or something and I make changes to it and then I need to leave here and go somewhere else and continue working on that document, if I put it in one of these online file storages like OneDrive, um, that document will be available for me on the laptop when I'm uh, out traveling somewhere. It does require that you have internet access for things to synchronize, um, so keep that in mind. We're gonna talk mostly about OneDrive and then I'll just show you quickly the other two, Dropbox and um, Google Drive, but they all basically are the same thing in principle, it's just their interfaces are a little bit different. It's kind of like a Ford or a Chevy or a Toyota. It's pretty much the same thing, just a little different in the way that it works. So OneDrive.com will get you here and this is the place where you're at. You can hit the sign up if you don't have a Microsoft account. One of the things that I like most about um, OneDrive is that it gives you 15 gig of free space. Google Drive also gives you 15 gig of free space. Dropbox only gives you two, which is one of the main reasons that I don't like Dropbox. So 15 gig of free space is a lot of files and storage and everything. And then you can also get more for free and it's pretty, the prices are the um, most competitive with Microsoft's Drive system. So I'm gonna hit the sign in button here and I'm gonna sign into my account. <coughs> While we are signing in, so like I said, you can collaborate, you can share files with people through this, you can do all kinds of really neato things. Some of it you do through the web interface and then some of it you do on the computer yourself or itself, I should say. So we're signed in here to my OneDrive. We're looking at the web interface right now. That's where we're gonna start. Now keep in mind, there's two parts. There's the web interface and then there's the local on the computer that we're gonna get to here in a minute. I'm gonna show you the web interface first because this is where you would sign in to right here, get the OneDrive app downloaded on your computer. The web interface shows you all of your folders. These are the different folders. And I like the Microsoft interface the most. It seems to be very creative and the most modern. You can take and drag files on top of each other like this. So you can drag and drop. Um, you can right click on things right here to do certain features like if you wanted to right click on this folder and if you wanted to share it with your family members or something you can share you could type in the email address right here recipients can view only you can change it so that they can view and edit and contribute so they can edit um, they don't need a Microsoft account I like to use the get a link and then here you can choose they can get a link uh, with view or edit if you do view only and you create the link you see it gives you this really long one. I often click the shorten link so you get the short version of that link right here. And then if you just copy and paste this to a friend on Facebook or in an email or pretty much just about anywhere you can think of, you get them this link and they can either view or edit depending on what permissions you set. This is only uh, capable through the web interface with all of them. So if you wanted to do the fancy sharing features and all that stuff, you need to do it through the web interface. Uh, if I go into this folder here, what I, the folder that I created specifically for this tutorial, um, I already created a test document right here. You see this test document? With Microsoft System, they have like a free online version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, this stuff right here. So I already created this free or this uh, document here with the free version of Word so that you can kind of see the web interface that's available through the documentation and everything. If I hit the edit document here, edit in Word Online, then you can see the full-fledged editor that you have available for the free online version. So remember, this is if like you're at the library or you're at work or something and you wanted to access a document that you had on your OneDrive on your home computer. So hello, this is a test and you see here's the basic interface, right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, there's no, by the way, there's no save really. You could do the save as to give it a different name, but if I wanna make changes to this, this is a change, so don't, uh, don't uh, freak out like things aren't gonna say. Right here, I just made the change to the document and then if I go back to my OneDrive or my test folder by clicking these guys up here, 
you'll see that the document itself right here, I didn't click save, but if I go back into it, those changes will have been saved. So don't freak out if you don't see the save button. See, there's the changes. All right, so this is the web interface. And like I said, the most important thing about the web interface, and by the way, you can share just folders. Like if you have 15 documents in a folder, you can share the whole folder or you can share a specific file. Um, I like to use right click, like I said, to get all of my stuff right here. But you could, if you wanted to, click the little checkbox and then you can hit your share up here or however you wanna do it. There's multiple ways to accomplish the same thing. If I wanted to put a file on here, um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Let's just do a really quick basic thing. I'm just gonna open a notepad here. And I'm just gonna save this notepad documentation. Yes, we're gonna save it on the desktop, we'll call it test file, and we'll save it here. This is the scenario where you're at work, you have a document and you wanna get it to your OneDrive. Again, you're at work, because remember, I'm gonna show you how to do things locally on your computer, um, your main computer, a little bit differently. You can do it all this way if you wanted to, but there's an easier way. But if you're on a computer where you don't have OneDrive installed, let's pretend you're at work, then you can take this file and you just drag it and drop it right into your OneDrive. You see how easy that is? It does not get any easier than that. That's one of the beautiful things of the Microsoft system over the other system is how easy it is to upload these files. And then if you wanted to download it, you click the little checkbox and hit download. If you wanna view it and edit it or make any changes to it, you can just click on the document and it'll open in the editor and you can make your changes that you wanna to make to the document. So right here it's loading. You can see the things going across the top. This is a test, test happy or something, you know? So very easy, very friendly to use through the web interface, very capable with a lot of different features and uh, the photos, the way that they work are excellent. Just so many things are really good with OneDrive. Microsoft did a really good job with this and I'm not a Microsoft fanboy. Some things they do terribly, but OneDrive, excellent. So one thing that we we're talking about is uh, how to do things locally on your own computer. So we have all of these files and we're doing everything through the website, right? But down here where it says, get the OneDrive app, if you click on that, you can download it and once it's installed on your computer, it's already installed here, I'm gonna open it, I'm just gonna type OneDrive, and you only need to do this the first time because it's not set up. You see, I intentionally left it not set up here. So this is the app that you can install on your computer that will interface directly with that website without you having to go to the website. You only wanna do this on computers that are yours, not um, computers that other people have access to. So I'm gonna run through the install here really quickly so that you can see how easy it is to set this up. Ask you for your Microsoft account, which obviously you need one in order to do all this stuff, but they're free. Go ahead and sign in here. I'm just going ahead and uh, accept the defaults here. Next, next. Right here, this is one important one that you may want to accept or not accept. Let OneDrive fetch any files on this computer. If you leave this checked, that means all of your things in your My Documents, your My Pictures, your My Music will be accessible through OneDrive. They are not on OneDrive necessarily, but they are accessible through OneDrive if your computer is turned on. So very important, let me, let me repeat that one more time. If you leave this checked, you will be able to access just about any of the files on your actual computer so long as your computer is turned on but they are not on OneDrive. OneDrive just kind of provides a pipeline for you to get directly into your computer. If you remove the checkbox, which is probably what I would do myself, but it's really entirely up to you, um, then only the files that are actually on OneDrive are accessible. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the checkbox for this. So notice OneDrive comes up. It looks just like normal folders. And you remember those same four uh, files that we had? Those are the same four that are here. And if I go into here, uh, it hasn't synchronized yet. Down here it's saying that it's adding the files and doing everything. You see the little cloud icon down here? This cloud icon is the OneDrive thing and it says processing changes and you see the little sync icon. So we'll give it just a second here while it's syncing all of its information and everything. One of the good things to keep in mind is that when you keep files on OneDrive, if your computer crashes, if your hard drive goes bad in your computer where it's not recoverable, because it's on the cloud, because it's on Microsoft servers, your information will be retrievable again in the future. So it's kind of like a backup. Now, don't, don't think that it is a backup. There are some drawbacks to doing it this way, but it is a layer of protection to help you out with things. So now I've waited for a few seconds and notice our files that I created on OneDrive system are right here. And you can access them just by double clicking on them as if they're folders on your computer.
So if I close this down and I close this down, how do we access OneDrive without going through that setup again? It's pretty easy. Um, if you click start, if you're on a modern version of Windows, you can just type OneDrive in here. What I like to do personally is I click the, the name up here. And when you have the name up here, then you get all of these folders. And one of them now says OneDrive. Also notice you have OneDrive listed over here. So anytime you do like a file save as or whatever. So let me pull back up this document here. If I do like a save as or whatever, you have OneDrive listed right here as well. And you see these same folders. So I could go into here and I can save directly to OneDrive. So notice it's acting just like a folder on your computer. And that's essentially what it is. It's a folder on your computer. And then that program that we installed matches things with the online version uh, to the things that are locally here in your computer. So let's pull back up that OneDrive thing. And if you wanted to create a shortcut, I like to right click and drag and release. And then you can do create shortcut here so that you have a shortcut to OneDrive right here on your desktop. So if we go back into the OneDrive thing here, I'm gonna make a change to this test document. Notice if I double click on it, it opens in normal word, not the online word. Let's see what happens. This is kind of like, you know, you're editing on a document, you started it at work, you come home, you make the change, you save the change, right? Then if we go back to the um, OneDrive system that we had set up, and we go back to our files here, and let's pull this guy up. Let's see if it's synchronized already. Hasn't quite synchronized yet. It takes it, if, oh, it looks like it just finished. So let's, uh, back out of this and this one and this one and let's go back to here and let's refresh and there you go like magic the online version has this let's see what happens which we added in the local version so you see you can work back and forth between the two of them and it's pretty much like a seamless back and forth transition um, and then again, you can install the um, app on more than one computer. So if you install it on your laptop and your home desktop, anything that's in one OneDrive folder will match what's on the other OneDrive folder. So if I create a new document, um, we'll just do like a Excel file on the computer locally, forget the web interface right now. And you know, we put some information in here, we'll save it. And then if I save it straight to OneDrive right here, and I'm gonna put it in the test folder. We'll just leave it as book two and hit save. Now on the other computer that you have installed this app on, if you install it on a second computer, you will have that test two inside of, or that book two inside of the documents folder. So they synchronize with each other among multiple computers. They synchronize from the computer that you have the app installed on to the cloud-based version. And you can do everything like I was showing you before through the actual cloud-based version itself. So, Pretty nice slick interface, um, gives you the portability to take files back and forth anywhere that you want to go. Works really well. There it is. It just popped right in there. Works really well. It's an incredible system. It's a great way to do things if you need some portability or some level of backup. And like I said, 15 gig of free storage is quite a bit of space. And again, just to repeat and keep in mind, um, if you want to do the more fancy like sharing of files, you can either check them, the files that you want to share and hit the share button. If it's a particular file or folder, you can just right click on it if you would like, and then you can share it that way. Um, you can share with a link or invite people. I like to share with the link myself personally, and you can choose what options that you want to allow, but you can only do this through the web interface. When you're looking at it through just the regular Windows version, that those options aren't available. The share with is something different. So don't get confused with those things. If you wanna do sharing with people other than yourself with your own account, you do it through the web interface. But very nice way to do things. Um, so I like to do this. So let's look at the other couple really quick. Um, so you saw the Microsoft interface and the way that it works. We can look at Google Drive. And if we sign in with Google Drive, similar concept. I don't think that the interface is quite as nice, but here's the Google Drive itself and uh, like a previous tech tip that I was working on a long time ago. If I double click on it and open it, Google has their own Google Docs editor. So you see you can edit your documents and all of that stuff in here. You can share the files right here. Um, you can save and do all the kinds of changes and all that stuff that you want to do. Just like Microsoft system, it's just using the Google one. One thing to keep in mind is sometimes you get some formatting issues by going back and forth between Google Drive and Microsoft's, um, you know, uh, Word or Excel or whatever. 
So uh, here's the Google version of it. So Google Drive, here's all of your docs and things like that. Um, I don't know if the drag and drop actually works. Let's see, it looks like it does. So the drag and drop works, that's nice. And um, you know, you can probably right click and yeah, you can do the share and so many of the similar features. So this is using Google Drive and you would need to install the app. If you install the app uh, on this computer, um, then you'll basically end up with the same thing instead of you'll have like one drive and then there'll be another one that says Google Apps or Google Drive. So same exact same concept. And then Dropbox, the last of the three. Um, so it was the oldest, but like I said, they only give you two gig of free storage and they have some crazy sharing things that are weird. I'm already signed into my account here, but you see this is the way their interface works for it. So if you wanna go into the photos, you click here, click in sample albums or something. You see the pictures like this, you can hit share. So similar in concept, I think that the website is no, nowhere near as advanced, but you know, a lot of people use it, it's very common. So you have this guy here. And then the same thing, you need to install the app. If you install the app, then instead of just having the web interface, you end up with the folder on your computer, just like um, OneDrive or Google Drive. So they'll just have little different icons next to it. So that's basically the online file storage stuff in a nutshell. Um, hopefully you get some use out of this. It's a really neat feature. It's a way to protect your information if your computer crashes um, and still be able to access the stuff. It's a way to synchronize files between either your computer and a web interface so that you can share it with friends and family. Online collaboration where you work on part of a project and then somebody else can edit the other part of the project or you can synchronize your files between your home computer and your laptop or whatever, things like that. Very nice, they're free, 15 gig for the for the first two Google Drive and OneDrive, so that's a lot of free storage space. The one thing to keep in mind in terms of security, <clears throat> in terms of the security themselves, you see this, how this has like this uh, green thing here, this HTTPS in front of it. Files are encrypted when they're transferred to and from these systems, but that does not mean that somebody can't hack your password they, they don't hack your password through like Dropbox or OneDrive or anything like Microsoft typically. What happens is that you get tricked into giving out the information or you make some kind of mistake where you supply the bad guys the information that they need. So if somebody, if there's like a site that's like Dropbox with two X's at the end of it instead of one and you type in your username and password, you probably have just been um, compromised and now they can get into your files and all of that stuff. But as long as you don't do things like that, then you'll be perfectly fine. So I would consider them fairly safe and secure. I don't have a problem really myself personally keeping any information, even tax information and stuff like that online. Some people might not like to do that, but I'm not that concerned with it. Uh, change your passwords every once in a while, you know, once every six months or once a year if you are concerned about it and that will reduce the likeliness of anything happening. So online file systems, great. Microsoft OneDrive and all this stuff, excellent things to use. I use them quite a bit in my business. I People can use them personally. There's just tons of great features about it. So give it a try. Um, like I said, they're all free and uh, hopefully you get some use out of this. So until next time, my name is Nick Ellis, again, PC Computer Guy, www.pccomputerguy.com or 317-883-7224. And until next time.